Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at the shape functions for a bilinear quadrilateral element. So just as a reminder, our goal here is to find the stiffness matrix, which was composed of an integral over our domain of that B matrix, which has the derivatives of our shape functions, multiplied by D, multiplied by B. And so because these have the derivative of our shape functions with respect to X and Y, we need to define those shape functions in such a way that we can find those values relatively easily. Looking at our elements in the x, y coordinate space, a quadrilateral element has four sides and four nodes, and we are calling this element omega. Now, as before, we're going to define our u and v based on the shape functions of each of those nodes. So we're going to have a shape function associated with node 1, which is going to be multiplied by u1, and the same is true of the other three nodes and we'll do the exact same thing for V. So just like with our constant strain triangle, it's very difficult to define these strain functions on the arbitrary position of our element. And so what we do is we define a new coordinate system, C eta, and we define our element as going from negative one to one in both C and eta. So this node one is going to have coordinates negative 1, negative 1. Node 2 is going to be positive 1, negative 1. Node 3 is positive 1, positive 1. And then node 4 is negative 1, 1. And so just like with u and v, we're going to have x and y defined as a sum of shape functions and nodal positions. So using this shape, let's go define these shape functions. Psi1 is going to be defined so that it is equal to 1 on node 1 and 0 on the other three nodes. And the way we can do that is by defining it as 1 minus xi, 1 minus eta, multiplied by 1 over 4. And so in this case, if either xi or eta is equal to positive 1, then the value is going to be 0. And only when both C and eta are equal to negative 1 do we get a non-zero value. And it turns out that that value is 4. And so we divide by 4 in order to make the value equal to 1 at the node. And we can do something similar for the other three nodes. So in this case, we want to change the value of C. So this is going to be 1 plus C, so that it's negative, <clears throat> so that it's 0 on 1 and 4. And then we're going to keep the 1 minus eta to make sure that it's 0 at 3. And so that is still multiplied by 1 fourth. And then psi 3 and psi 4 look really similar. Now, as a reminder, we are going to be using the Jacobian in order to calculate our d psi i's with respect to x and y. And that Jacobian is just a 2 by 2 matrix with our derivatives of x with respect to c and eta, and the same for y. And that Jacobian is inverted and multiplied by our derivatives of psi i with respect to xi and eta. So again, we call this the Jacobian, and it is inverted. Now, in order to calculate these, we need to take the derivatives of psi with respect to xi and eta. So let's do that really quick. So for psi 1, the derivative with respect to xi is just going to be a negative 1 fourth 1 minus eta. The derivative with respect to eta 
is going to be a negative 1 fourth 1 minus C. And then this pattern stays pretty similar for our other three shape functions. So for psi 2, the derivative with respect to C is positive, and the derivative with respect to eta is still negative. For psi 3, they're both positive. And then for psi 4, only the dc derivative is negative. To find these derivatives of x and y, we need to sum up the derivatives of all of our shape functions. So we'll have the derivative of psi 1 with respect to c multiplied by x1, and so on and so forth. Now the result of this is going to be 1 fourth 1 minus eta multiplied by both x1 and x2. x2 is positive here and x1 is negative. And then we're going to have a 1 plus eta term which is multiplied by both 3 and 4. And in this case x3 is positive and x4 is negative dx d eta is going to look similar. We're still going to have that 1 over 4 term, but now we're using these values. So in this case, we're going to have a 1 minus c term, which has both x4 and x1. So that'll be x4 minus x1. And then we're going to have a 1 plus c term, which will have a positive x3 and a negative x2. And for the y values, the dy, dx, and dy, d eta, all we have to do is replace all of our x's with y's above. So it's this exact same pattern. We just have y's where we have x's. All right, now everything is technically defined here. However, we have a slight problem. This is not constant, right? It is changing with C and eta. And so our Jacobian, whenever we take that inverse, we're going to have variation over that space, which is not easily integrable. So before we were able to say that this was constant and just integrate over our area and we were done. This time we have to do a little bit more work. We're going to integrate over our area in C eta space. So that's from negative one to one in both C and eta. And we're still gonna have that B transpose D B, which we can define as functions of C and eta. But then because we've transformed this, we need to multiply by the determinant of our Jacobian. And then we can safely say that this is the integral over C and eta. And of course, we do need to multiply this by H, the thickness of our element. Now, like I said, this is very difficult. So instead of actually performing this integral, we instead use numerical integration. So there's something called Gaussian quadrature that works really well for this that we'll talk about in the next video. But the, the short version of that video, we can get an approximate solution relatively easily. And all we have to do is just evaluate everything at the center point. And if we do that, we can just pretend it's constant. And this gets okay results. So in that Gaussian quadrature video, we will dive into some more accurate ways of calculating this integral that are not really all that resource intensive, but this is a reasonable starting point. So that is all we are going to be doing this time, and I will catch you in the next video.